another episode of the Gulfstream Shorts. I'm Dr. Kesley Banks with the Heart Research Institute at Texas A&M Corpus Christi. We're here in lovely Port Aransas at Fisherman's Wharf to talk to Captain Ben Baker about illegal fishing here in the Gulf of Mexico. So tell me, Ben, how did you become a game warden? So my individual journey to become a game warden started in Oklahoma. Uh, being a native of Oklahoma, I grew up hunting, fishing, and doing all the traditional, you know, consumptive activities that, you know, some Oklahoma kids do. Uh, graduated from a small town in Oklahoma, went to Lawrence, Kansas, where I got my undergraduate in environmental science yep. with an emphasis in chemistry and biology. So from there, I kind of started that love for biology and that love for the environment and seeing how everything works and how everything's integrated together. So we, we came to Texas in 2005, my wife and I, and I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And so I thought, you know, a, a, a a good, a good thing to do while you're trying to figure out is keep going to school, right? And so I thought, you know, I, I am interested in biology. It kind of does a little bit with my undergraduate, so I might as well get a master's in biology. So I started at Texas A&M Corpus Christi, so I am an Islanders. Go uh, Durs! Yes, right. That's right. So uh, went to Texas A&M Corpus Christi, started my biology master's program, and just happened to meet a couple of game wardens, Texas game wardens. Ooh. And so from there, I kind of inquired, okay, what do you guys do? I know I've heard of you, but I've never been inspected by one in Oklahoma or Kansas. So tell me a little bit about what you do. And so once they told me, once they kind of laid it out, everything that they do, everything that they're about, every the mission they stand for, it got me really excited. And I knew from that point on, this is the only job for me. And, uh, and this is what I want to do. This is my career. This is it. This is it. And so from there, I got into the uh, Texas Game Warden Academy. Uh, I got stationed in Star County my first four years, Falcon Lake, Rio Grande City, wonderful place, wonderful people, mm. plenty of activity on uh, Lake Falcon, uh, a lot of recreational fishing, uh, you know, a, a lot of everything else that kind of goes on with the border station. So it was it was great. Had great partners down there, great community. Then I transferred up to San Patricio County in 2013. So I started my, my coastal game warden mm. career in 2013 in San Patricio County, which includes Nueces County as our district. And so that's when I kind of fell in love with the coast, fell in love with the marine environment and everything that went along with it, really got that salt water in my blood. Uh, and so from there, I promoted a supervisor in 2018 and I've kind of been the supervisor for the Corpus Christi district ever since. Well, I think you're pretty fabulous. And, <laughs> thank you, and thank what you're you. doing here is wonderful. So let's move into how to game wardens in your area protect sharks and other game species here in the yeah, so so game wardens as being conservation law enforcement you know that that is our that is what we do that is our purpose yes we are state police officers and yes we do have a duty for public safety absolutely but our niche our our vision our mission is conservation law enforcement so obviously that entails all conservation law enforcement whether it be the marine environment you know the woods we are the law enforcement off the pavement so your game wardens, along with, of course, our federal partners and our local partners, are on the water looking and inspecting for, you know, illegal activity. And that illegal activity, what we're seeing a lot of is not only in federal waters, but state waters, is we're seeing some I IUU, you know, uh, illegal, unreported, un unregulated. Mm -hmm. And so when we're seeing some of those activities, what we really are seeing a lot of is what we call long lines. And of course, what those long lines are is, is they're, you know, a, a set of lines set up with hooks in them and the commercial fishing usually are catching sharks. If they're setting them on top or catching snapper, you know, some of these long lines are species specific, mm -hmm. but they also catch everything else in there for catching turtles or catching, you know, everything in there. And so what your game wards are doing is we're out there actively patrolling, we're actually patrolling both state waters, both federal waters. And we're looking for this IUU gear, this illegal gear that's out there and trying to find it, trying to get it, trying to, you know, do what we do with it and get it out of the water before it can really have that harmful impact on, you know, that fish population. Cool. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Um, and then tell us a little bit more about um, your interactions with some fishermen. Have you seen more of a shift towards sustainable fishing practices, especially with the recreational guys in this area or... Yeah, a absolutely. Uh, you know, fortunately, in the in the technology age where we've got, you know, great, great programs like this and, and great other programs, you know, especially with the Heart Research Institute and the information and the education you folks push out, the stuff we push out, our coastal fishery folks are fantastic on what they do, the education they push out. 
we are seeing more informed and more educated anglers, which always translates to a more responsible uh, harvest. And so we are seeing that. Uh, you know, unfortunately, you will always have some folks out there will, that will try to explore the resource, but we are seeing the far and vast majority are conservationists. They are want to sustain this fishery so not only they can enjoy it but future generations can enjoy it as well so yes we are seeing that sustainable practice uh of course you know the, the mission's not done there are always folks out there that again are going to take advantage of the of the fishery so that's why we're out there keeping an eye on it so are you seeing an uptick in shark fishing particularly or more catch and release in that fishery as well no, sure or? sure so we're not necessarily seeing an uptick in in legal recreational shark fishing, but we are seeing a small uptake in IUU, illegal uh, long lines. And we're seeing that mainly on the Texas-Mexico border. And we're seeing that both in state and in federal waters. Uh, you know, we, we are dedicated to, to the sustainability of this fishery. And as you know, the problem with this IUU, this illegal, you know, uh, unreported, unregulated activity is that with all this NOAA sampling, there's no way for you, us, or anybody to get a, a good idea of what the fish population is. And so whenever we don't have a good idea, how can we implement sustainable practices to keep this fishery going? So some of these fishery populations, especially close down on the Mexican border, are getting hit very hard. Yeah. And so we, we are dedicated to this, and we are dedicated to what we call ghost gear, which is those long lines that are left out there. And whether they're, you know, the, the commercial fishermen from Mexico were coming in, leaving them, and then coming back and getting them, they're sitting there catching everything. And like I said, they're IUU gear. So we are dedicated to going out there, finding that gear, bringing that gear back. Matter of fact, uh, you know, with this initiative we're pushing on this ghost gear, we are slated to get two new vessels coming in, hopefully in the next year or two, dedicated yeah. just for that. So we're gonna place those close to the border where, where we see it's getting hit the most. Uh, work with our federal partners on that, work with, uh, you know, both Coast Guard and NOAA, uh, work, work with the Heart Research Institute, and kind of all come together and figure out what we can do for this IUU year and getting yeah. this sustainability for this fisheries and really making an impact on it. Okay, so I'm sure you get this question a lot, but I have to ask, what is your biggest bust to date fish-wise? You know, biggest bust to date fish-wise, I've been promoted a little while. So, uh, you know, we 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 always make some, some rather large uh, federal snapper cases, mm -hmm. uh, you know, where we're out there, you know, in closed season. There's a lot of federal snapper fishing going on. There's, you know, a, a lot of over the limit or, you know, in the size of, you know, a state snapper. Yeah. So I would say, uh, you know, mostly on the coast, there's gonna be those snapper cases. And it's not uncommon for us to seize, you know, 100, 200 snapper in some cases. So they can get fairly large. We did have a case, uh, it was a few years ago where we seized over 500 uh, up in this area. It was a wow. few years back, but they can get pretty large. Uh, what about sharks? Do you see a, lo a lot of sharks in the IUU fishery as well? We and do. We do. Uh, unfortunately, with those long lines, you know, I, I don't have the specific numbers for you of how many we're actually seeing, but we can, we can have miles of long line. And in those miles of long lines, you're going to have sharks, just sharks, sea turtles. It's kind of out there catching indiscriminately, right? Whatever it can catch. And so we're going to see miles of that, and there's going to be a ton of sharks in there. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's just catching whatever it can catch for as long as it can catch till we come out there and, and take it out of the water, take it out of play. Thanks again, Ben. Thank you for having me. Thank you for watching this episode of Gulfstream Shorts. We'll see you next time.